Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this week's video, I'm gonna recreate a look that I did quite a few years ago. In fact, it was before I had a YouTube channel, hence the reason there is no video for it. So this has actually been requested by quite a few of you on numerous occasions. Every time I share the piece that I painted originally, I always get asked if there's a video tutorial to go with it. And the answer until right now has been no. But now, I am going to create a video tutorial and I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. Also, don't mind how I look, I just got caught in a snowstorm and I only washed my hair last night so I'm a little bit upset about that. So, as you can see, the prep work has already been done on this because um, it's very basic. So, all I did last night was cleaned it all over with Dixie Bell's White Lightning. Then. I filled all of the hardware holes, took all the old hardware off because I'm not going to be using those handles because they are not very nice. So I took all the handles out and then I filled it with wood filler um, because the handle holes were quite large and then I have just completely sanded it down, scuff sanded it and sanded all of the hardware holes flat where the filler had dried. So prep work is out of the way so we can start adding a little bit of colour. So the name of this game is Texture. And I'm going to be using a texture additive, which is called Sea Spray. This is a powdered additive that you can put into paint to create lots and lots of different effects. It comes in a big pouch like this, or more recently, Dixie Bell have released it in a smaller tub. So if you didn't need to buy such a big amount as that, you can buy a smaller tub. Obviously, I buy a bigger pouch because I use quite a lot of it. So as I say, the aim of this is to create a lot of different texture on the piece. I'm going to use three colours and I'm going to use the same three colours that I used on the piece that I created a few years ago and those three colours are Antebellum Blue, Daisy and Florida Orange. You can use any three colours. I have done this finish in a variety of different colours and finishes and um, it always looks good in bright colours but if that's not your thing you could stick to kind of more neutral tones and go for the that kind of look. So the first colour that I'm going to use is Antebellum Blue. As always I will list everything that I use in the description below if you do miss it at some point in the video. So into my paper bowl I'm going to add some antebellum blue and then I'm going to add some sea spray. I've used about a scoopful, just under a scoopful. You only need to use a little bit to thicken your paint. Obviously the more texture additive you add the thicker your paint is going to get and then I'm just going to give it a really good mix to make sure all the powder is mixed into the paint thoroughly. I'm going to use a natural bristle brush, this is just a cheap and cheerful chip brush from Dixie Bell. Um, they're really cheap and inexpensive so the pounce in motion and the sea spray would probably over time ruin a decent brush but these are really inexpensive so it doesn't matter too much. I like to use these for texture. So I'm just pouncing it on the surface and that's going to create lots and lots of little dints and peaks of texture. And the sea spray helps hold that texture in place because Dixie Bell's Chalk Mineral Paint is actually a self-leveling paint. So it has self-leveling properties which means it wants to lie flat and this helps it not do that. And then once I've covered an area, before it's had a chance to properly dry, I just smooth over any of the really kind of high peaks because I just find that it looks a little bit more authentic, a little bit like kind of paint that's been chipped away over time as opposed to lots and lots of little peaks. When you sand them back, you kind of get like a speckledy look, which is fine in areas, but the, the aim is to try and make this look really random and to try and make lots and lots of different kind of areas of texture that have variety. So if everything looked the same, when you distressed it, it would all look the same and then it kind of wouldn't look authentic. That's my take on it anyway. Also, you've noticed I've not added any water to this at all, either in the paint or via a spray bottle. And that's because, again, water helps the paint lay smooth, which is what we don't want to achieve in this case. So I did the top and then kind of tinkered around with that to create the kind of texture that I wanted. And then I moved on to the sides and the front. I'm doing it separately in smaller areas so that I get chance for the texture to look how I want it to look before it's finished completely dried. But if you are finding that there's areas that have dried down quick, uh, because sea spray can kind of dry really hard and quite fast as well, you can always just sandpaper them down a little bit or just kind of chip away at them with a scraper if there's any areas that you think don't look really good. 
also what it is worth mentioning is not to fret too much over what the texture may or may not look like because you won't know the outcome until you've added more layers of colour and distressed it back and even if you have got areas that you don't like even then it is still possible to bring it back and I'll show you how I did that later on. So once I've got one coat of the base colour all over the piece, what I like to do with any leftover paint is just grab a spatula or a stick or anything that you can kind of scrape it on with and just apply some of that kind of drying, cloggy paint in tiny areas. Um, again, I don't put it all over. I only put it in kind of specific areas where I want that real blue to kind of show through. Um, again, if you put lots of this on, your piece is going to look more chippy. If you choose not to do this, your piece is just going to look not as chippy, that's all. This is just something I like to do because, again, it very varies the texture that's on the piece. And it just gives you that kind of little peak of blue in certain areas. And, again, just gives you a little bit more variation to the distressing. For me personally, where I like to add this is around edges and corners and lips. So depending on the piece that you're painting, um, just have a think about where it might get knocked and chipped naturally over time. So you can see I'm just concentrating it around like the top of the edge here um, and around the edges of the drawers and things like that because that's going to be obviously a lot more texture in those areas which means when I distress it back later, you're going to see more of that blue kind of peeking through. The next colour I'm going to use is Daisy. Now, I don't think I'm going to need to add any sea spray to this because I've been a naughty painter and I haven't fastened the lid back on the top properly. Oh, that was nice. Um, so my paint has gone, it's not solid, but it's very, very thick and it's a lot thicker than what the usual consistency of Dixie Bell Chalk Mineral Paint is. That's going to work to my advantage in this case because I want the texture to be thick to hold the, all the kind of texture that we're going to create. So if you don't have thick paint because you haven't left your lid off like I have you can just add sea spray to yours um, alternatively if you do want to try and get your paint to go thick like this what I would recommend is setting some aside in on a paper plate or in a jar and leaving the lid off um, and that will give you the same kind of consistency as this or you could just add sea spray that's probably a little bit easier so either way it's going to help us in this situation the other thing is I'm not just going to use a brush for this I'm actually going to use a scraper as well so variety is key when you're creating texture so that when you distress it doesn't all look uniform and kind of contrived it kind of looks a little bit natural and organic so here we go with the daisy obviously the first layer has completely dried you probably want to leave that to dry overnight because you've added well i've added it thick the first layer i added thick to get full coverage and obviously we've added a lot of texture in there as well so you're adding this paint on thicker than what you usually would if you were just painting it as normal with a paintbrush and then this time i'm going to create a little bit of different texture because my paint is slightly thicker i've added no sea spray to it and i'm just going to add that yellow in areas you don't have to have the yellow full coverage um, in other words you could just kind of dab this around in little areas that you wanted to distress and see peaks of yellow so as you can see this is super thick and that is because i've left the lid off or the lid hasn't been fully tight and if that ever happens to you and you want to bring your paint back, you can just add a little bit of tap water in there and just gently stir it around until it mixes together and gets you the consistency that it should be. So you can rescue paint if you have ever done this by accident. I happen to like thick paint and in this case it's going to help me to create all that texture that I want to create. So I'm adding quite a lot of this yellow colour on here. Um, because I do want to see a fair amount of that yellow kind of peeking through the final stage. But if you want to see less yellow and more blue or less of your second colour and more of your first colour, just don't add as much yellow or second colour as what I'm doing. You can completely manipulate how much of the base layer and second layer you, you see through your final layer, if this makes sense. Hope you're, hope you're keeping up to speed <laughs> with all these layers and colours. But basically you can manipulate how much of those colours that you can see through your final colour just by adding less or adding more. 
and I've said this before, but if you can get a child to help you apply texture, it always looks really authentic. So as you can see, I'm holding my paintbrush quite high at the top and that's going to give me a much kind of looser grip and less control over where the paintbrush goes because I don't want this to look precise. I don't want it to look contrived. I want to try and make it look kind of organic and, and kind of aged as possible. So I'm going over the areas where the paint has already started to dry and dragging it around. I'm basically breaking every single rule if you want to create a smooth finish on your paint as possible. So everything that you want to create, usually a beautiful smooth finish, or most people want to cre create a smooth finish. I don't. I love a bit of texture. I love a bit of character. And you can see me now using a plastic spatula so this is a dixie mud spatula and i like plastic spatulas because they're not quite as harsh as a metal one um they're a little bit kind of more flexible so as you can see i am literally just whacking it on i'm concentrating the thicker bits in the corners more because i'm going to distress those a little bit heavily than the kind of rest of it my rule of thumb is corners and edges and lips and detail is where you would normally get kind of your your kind of distress in so in the big center panel you can see i've put less yellow and that applies to the sides as well i'm not going to go quite as heavy on the texture on the sides because it's not something that you would usually see a lot of wear and tear on those bigger flat panels all you kind of distressing would be on edges and corners so moving on to the front i use more of the spatula and less of my brush here because this is going to be where the the, most of the distressing is going to happen because that's where we've got most of the detail around those kind of draw edges um, and the corners and things like that so I'm just using a paintbrush for the center of the drawers and then I'm using my scraper to basically give a really chippy effect on the rest of it which is actually a really really cool effect on its own but obviously we're going to go over the top of this with our third and final color so the third and final color that I'm going to apply all over the top of these crazy colors that we've already put on is florida orange this is dixie bell's brightest bright brightest brightest orange it's very very bright and in comparison to terracotta you can see how bright that is it's very dark again here today so i don't know if that's quite picking up how bright that is on camera what i'm going to say to you now is this paint will take an extra coat to what you're used to coverage wise so the reason for that is when you're using colors that are very very bright and pure this is one of them there is a lack of white pigment in the paint so if you can compare if you compare those two colors this is terracotta and this is florida orange you can see how much kind of muted and kind of less bright that the terracotta is and the coverage of terracotta is fabulous as on most dixie bell colors you can get full coverage usually from one to two coats with dixie bell colors this takes a little bit more coverage and it is purely because there is lack of white pigment in it because it is so bright so basically what i'm saying is you're usually used to covering most Dixie Bell colours in two coats. I would imagine this will probably take three, especially to cover over the top of this. We've got dark blue, we've got bright yellow, probably going to take two to three coats to cover this. That's absolutely normal for all colours and that just doesn't go for Dixie Bell, that's across the board with most paint ranges. If you've got a really, really bright colour like this, it's going to be an extra coat to get full coverage and it's because of the lack of white pigment in it. I hope that made sense but orange is notoriously a colour that does need an extra coat to get full coverage and you can see here that it's not bad coverage it's not terrible coverage by any means but it's just going to take probably three coats to get over the antebellum blue and the daisy and I'm using a synthetic brush here because I just want to get this paint on I want full coverage I'm going to cover over the two layers that I've already done and I'm using a brush but in lots and lots of different directions so that we can get all the orange in the texture that we've created don't be tempted to add any water either unless your paint is particularly thick if you've left the lid off like I did with the yellow but don't be tempted to add any water because obviously that's going to thin the paint out and that's going to make you need more coats of the colour to get full coverage. So this is the second coat of the florid orange going on. You can see how much that increases the coverage of that colour and I did do three coats in total of this. Next it's interesting because this is where you get to choose your weapon of choice. I've got a few that I like to use. I've got some scrapers here that are carbide scrapers, very, very sharp. You might have seen them before in 
videos that I'm taking paint off or stripping wax off. So I've got three different sizes. I've got sandpaper. I've got lots of different grits of sandpaper. And I've also got my electric sander as well. I'm actually going to start with my electric sander because I had to leave these for... I think it was at least 24 hours, I think it was slightly more, before I distressed. The longer you leave your paint to distress, the tougher it's going to be. Because obviously, paint takes, usually, most water-based paints, including this one that I'm using now, takes 30 days to fully cure. And during that cure time, it eventually gets harder and harder and harder. So, the longer you leave your paint to distress, the harder it's going to be. And Dictable paint is actually very, very tough. Um, it doesn't stay soft like terra clay paint. It's quite a soft kind of crumbly texture even once it's fully dry. Chalk mineral paint is actually very, very durable. So for that reason, I'm going in with my electric sander. Now the grit that I have on here, the sandpaper grit that I have, is a 180 grit, but it has been used to sand the drawers when I prep them so the grit has worn down a little bit and what I would say if you are using an electric sander to distress just go very carefully I'd probably advise starting out with a 220 or 280 grit to start off with just because if you've got a powerful electric sander like mine you will rip straight through all the layers of your paint and go straight down to wood, which is obviously something that you don't want to do, unless you do want to do that, and you want to see the wood revealing through, which I have done in a few areas here, um, but obviously the main thing that I want to see is the yellow and the blue layers that we've put underneath. So start with a, with a 220 or 280 grit, and also if you have got the option to turn the power down on your electric sander, do that. So what will start to happen is you'll be able to see those colours peeking through. You can see quite a lot of the daisy, which is the yellow, and you can also start to see some of the blue as well. The more I distress with my sander, the more it's going to peel those kind of layers back. And I'm just working my way around the edges of this piece. Like I said, I'm not going to heavily distress the, the kind of centre where it's kind of flat and there's nothing much going on. Um, I'm just going to make sure that the edges and the corners are distressed the most because that's just where I prefer to put the distress work more. Um, and as you can see, I'm working my sander in lots of different ways as well. I'm not just going forwards and backwards in one motion as you would do if you were sanding a piece. I'm kind of using corners and edges, which again... It's not advisable to tilt your sander on a corner or on the front or on the edge to use that because it's going to wear it down unevenly. But I like breaking rules and that's just how I use my sander to kind of distress it. Again, for the front, I'm going to start off with my electric sander and just kind of knock the worst of the texture down. I say the worst, I mean the most. It's not worst, it's not bad. Texture's good. I'm going to knock the most of the texture down with my electric sander and then I'm going to go in with my medium-sized scraper because it's just going to allow me to get in those kind of recessed areas where my sander won't. It's also going to let me refine the areas that I want to kind of pick out with the distress work. And also, again, remember me saying about variation in distressing techniques. This is just going to make it look less uniform. So if I just sanded the whole piece down in exactly the same way, then obviously it would look kind of uniform. In Although we've got different texture in different areas, it would just kind of look all the same, samey same. This way, with the scraper and a little bit of sandpaper and a little bit of electric sander and lots and lots of different ways of distressing, is going to give you different outcomes. Also, you may have noticed that I painted with the drawers in place of this, which I often do because I film most of my content and it just makes for easier filming when the drawers are in situ rather than having to keep take them out and move my camera around. Um, but for this piece, I have take, I've left the drawers in for that reason as well, but also because... I like to kind of see how the texture's looking as a piece overall, as opposed to taking each individual drawer out and treating them differently. The piece has kind of got a flow and it's kind of got to work. So if I heavily distress an area and you can see lots of yellow, I don't want to do that directly underneath it. I kind of want to make it look really random. So I did paint with the drawers in. And as you can see, as I'm distressing, I am also cleaning up the edges of the drawers where a little bit of that texture might have kind of gone over the lip or anything. Because these will be 
for sale so obviously I want to finish them to a high standard so that's how I clean up the drawers especially if they're solid pine like these it's quite easy to just run the sand around the edges and I also distress the kind of edges of the drawers at the same time as well so distressing is a form of creation um, you are obviously taking the paint off but it is giving you an effect. So whatever way that you want to distress, whether it is by sandpaper, scraper, whatever, you are creating that kind of effect. And as you can see here, it is starting to kind of peel those layers back. I have just taken off way too much paint on one area and I'm going to show you how I kind of combat that next. So just because you've distressed it, it doesn't mean that you have to leave it like that. So as you can see here, it's a bit dark, but as you can see, we've kind of distressed it as much as I want to. And in some areas, it is looking a bit too much. And that's just a personal preference for me on this particular piece. So all I'm doing is I'm going back in with my Florida Orange and I'm taking the most of the paint off onto a rag. And then I'm just dry brushing over the areas that I've distressed too much. And as I say, this is personal preference. So there's areas that I just don't particularly like on this piece that have just gone too heavily distressed or I don't like how it looks when it's been distressed. There's too much yellow or there's not enough blue or whatever it might be. It helps if you stand back and look at your piece kind of overall as opposed to just picking out individual areas. And like I say, just because you have distressed areas, it doesn't mean that it has to stay like that. You can kind of reverse that distressing just by adding the orange back over the top. Also, when you are distressing, don't panic if your paint gets kind of like a hazy white dust over it and you think it doesn't look as vibrant as what it did when you first painted it. When you've applied your top coat, um, whether, whether that be a wax or a clear coat, those colours will go back to their original vibrancy. So this is just me building up those areas of orange um, just to basically take back some of the distressing that I went in a little bit too heavy with. Some of the areas that I went heavy with took it right back to the wood and that was just me being a little bit heavy handed. So I'm just basically using the orange as an eraser for the areas that I've distressed too heavily. So I've got my distress work and my paint work in a position where I'm happy with it and then I'm going to add a little bit more dimension and depth with waxes. So this is my favourite way of adding a little bit of dimension. Um, there are numerous different products that Dixie Bell do that you can do this with but my preferred way is with waxes. So the first thing I'm going to do is apply a coat of clear wax all over the piece. This is Best Dang Wax and it's actually a water-based wax. It's really easy to use. I'm just applying it with a sponge because that's my preferred way of doing it but you can also apply this with a brush as well so just before I applied the bra the black wax sorry it's not brown it's black in this case just before I did that I put the handles on and um, that's because I want to shade around the handles with the black wax so my clear wax has been on then I put my handles on and now I'm adding Best Dang Wax in black I'm using a brush with this because I want to be a little bit more precise as to where I put the black wax and I'm going to concentrate this in areas like on the top obviously it's got a little bit of detail I'm just going to run it down there and what I do is put a very small amount onto a dry chip brush because this is a natural bristle brush so it's perfect for waxes and then I'm going to put the most of the product where I want to emphasize that kind of dimension and then just use the rest of the product on my brush to kind of feather it out so you don't get a really harsh line there's also another step that I'm going to do in a second as well that helps that kind of merging with the clear wax so there's not a really kind of harsh line where the black wax finishes but that's generally how I do it so the majority of the product I will put in around edges corners and detail and then I'll just feather it out with the remainder of the product that's on the brush. The front's a little bit easier to put black wax on because we've got detail on the drawers. Obviously, the handles are on there as well. So I'm adding shading around the recessed areas of the, each drawer. And I'm also adding a little bit of shading underneath that lip at the front and the corners and the edges. And again, using exactly the same process as before, putting the majority of the product around the corners, right in this kind of deepest areas where I want the shading to be. And then just dragging the brush to kind of create that softer kind of faded outlook. 
I'm also using the blue sponge, the original blue sponge that still has a little bit of the clear wax on as a kind of an eraser and it also kind of serves the purpose that you can kind of blend the two together so you're not getting that harsh line where the black wax ends. You also want this to kind of look really organic so again how are we distressed to make it kind of look organic and natural and not too samey samey the same applies with black wax so you don't want it all to look really symmetrical and each drawer identical in where you've put the black wax I kind of like to make it look a little bit randomized um, I'll concentrate a little bit of black wax in some areas and less in others and I also think it's quite important to leave some of the Florida orange without any black wax on at all because that gives you a really good contrast between the areas that have got wax on and areas that haven't. Once you've finished with your wax always make sure to buff the excess off really well because otherwise it will stay tacky and sticky and won't dry down properly. So as always I'm going to give you a few close-ups of how the piece finished up. This one round I think had more yellow on it than the original piece that I did a few years ago but I quite like it. Um, there's probably a little bit less blue but you can just see a little bit of blue in that bottom corner there and there's a close-up of the shading on the drawers with the black wax as well. I also put a little bit of white card in the card holder handles because I really think it makes the orange pop. Thank you for watching the video, as always it's much appreciated. If you did like the video and you don't already subscribe, make sure you hit the subscribe button and I will catch you next time. Bye!